Hello everyone, it's Toby and today you're joining me for another quick sketch. So we're going to be using our normal sketching techniques to sketch this amazing lighthouse, the moody sea, the lovely shadows, and no waffle today, we're just going to jump in and go for it. Now I'm going to move the lighthouse slightly to the side just to get a slightly more asymmetrical composition. And this is going to be loose and quick. I'm going to try and do it mostly in one continuous line because I feel like it. I've actually been recording these things all day, little tutorials and things, and now I'm getting a bit tired. So you know what? I just want to have a bit of fun and remember that sketching can also just be a really gentle bit of fun to have. So I'm just starting with a simple line to capture the, the key shapes here. So clearly got the lighthouse there coming forward. We've then got the sort of walls of these surrounding buildings got these amazing bits which stand out like these chimneys just got to get those haven't we same here another couple of chimneys and yeah look because of the continuous line i was looking up as i drew it and you can see that the the chimneys have gone a bit uh, skewy they should be the same height but they're not in my version but that's okay you know these things will happen especially if we're just doing quick sketching and little sort of chimney there as well isn't there loads of these chimneys hanging around when you start looking for them coming along we just start to get some of these greenery textures in We've got a nice uh, window that we can add in just back here as well we don't need to fully resolve every detail of our scene so i don't need to explain everything like how all the bottoms of the buildings really finish things like that we can leave things to the imagination and that is exactly what I'm going to do in this sketch this really quick sketch and so far I've managed to keep it going with one continuous line so I'm quite impressed with myself for that sort of level of concentration whilst also waffling coming along getting the, the textures of these rocks along with the sort of feel of the water lapping up and then just gonna sort of bring it in and kind of get you see how there's this ring of brown we'll just get that feel in a few places and then come up and get this little ring of lighter green and this way we can spiral our continuous line around come up into the background and come up to this lovely backdrop of some loose little mountains coming down flowing down to here last bit to get in on, in our continuous line will be well two bits really sorry firstly the the top of our lighthouse with these lovely windows we can just get that in with some little sort of dark areas and then of course we've got this backdrop of green in the distance as well which kind of extends all the way off to the edge and then we can get again these similar ideas textures of rock and there we go a few little loose marks for the sea all in one line all really quickly we've grabbed our scene no it's not perfect but it was fun and on top of this, we can really have a lot of fun with some watercolours. So immediately we will jump into exactly that. We'll jump into our watercolours. People often ask what not to paint. And look, this lighthouse is a great example of something begging out to be left as this bright, bold sort of bastion of white on our page. So with that in mind, we can immediately start working out how we can get these other fascinating colours in on our scene. I want enough mood in here. It's definitely like a bright day but it's also look at that that um that sea is full of movement of suggesting wind it's got these big shadows on the greenery that are suggesting a sort of cloudy day as well so we'll we'll splash our colors in that'll keep them loose and if we use enough water we can keep them moving around we can touch in some like little touches of light glowing in there we can move them around and let them just flow and get that real sort of feeling of, of texture going on. Something which might be fun to try in this, these really rich blues, to really like overdo it almost, overdo. Normally I try and keep my, my skies really gentle, but let's just try overdoing it a bit here. And I'm going to add a little bit of granulation spray in there to get some real texture going. Just a few little sprays here and there and look suddenly that is now definitely a moody sky we'll see what happens there we'll see what happens we'll keep working elsewhere we can always come back and soften that out a bit if we need to 
in the background, I'm going to keep the vivid colour scheme going. And this is what I like thinking about with my colours. is isn't like, oh, how do I make it really accurate? No, I'm thinking about how to get something which portrays the scene, but also portrays the, the feel of the scene. So in this instance, the feel is bright, but also moody. It's full of contrast. So we've got these bright areas of greenery, and I'm going to exaggerate the yellow in them to keep them really lively. Coming down, I'm going to get these moody areas and I'll use some quinacridone sienna and indigo to do that. And then we're into the sea, already into the sea, and we'll just reflect those bright blues from up there and these indigos as well that we used into the sea. And again, we want lots of texture. So that means coming back in with our brush, maybe moving things around a little bit, softening them out where they've gone a bit over the top, a little bit over the top in a couple of places splash in some water in a few places and maybe we'll redo some like idea of this light shining through now i'm going to let things sort of mellow out things are very vibrant at the moment but they will as they as they dry they will mellow i just want to come into the sky and just see what i what can i still move around what have we got as texture what can i still move and push and this is me really exploring i've only recently had this granulation spray. I'm not sure if I love it, um, but it's definitely a bit of fun, something different to try. I just wanted to see really what effects it was going to have. Could I still push it around? It's actually dried though very quickly. I think reflecting that texture down in the bottom here will be uh, useful. So I'm going to just do the same here and that will kind of, I'm hoping, connect our blues together and leave us this sort of shining, less moody bit in the middle that we can then play with, with our second layer of colours. So this needs to dry and then we can come back in and just work out a little bit more structure in between these very bold blue areas. And we are back and we are mostly dry. Um, there are wet areas and I think actually I'm going to choose to go anyway with my next stage because with those wet areas what will happen is we'll get a lovely sense of softness and flow. These textures are quite something, and I think actually they're okay. Again, I'm not sure that I love them, but this is the fun of sketching, getting to play around and just see what happens when you try new things out. Now, the point of this layer is to get a bit more structure to these very loose colors. So I'm gonna be a bit more specific about how I place my colors. I want to keep some of that lovely glow, but I want to also really get the feel that this lighthouse is a bit of negative space, a little bastion of white in our image. I'm also going to include in that little white, I'm going to include this big hill. I think leaving that as just something which will add a bit of shadow to in a bit is going to be quite a fun way of approaching this scene. So again, as an experiment, I've said already this is at the end of a long day of recording, so it's not going to be my best work but really doesn't mean I can't enjoy it just as much as the, uh, the stuff at the beginning. There is this kind of little cycle of engagement we can get into where we either, we're really happy, everything's going amazing, um, and we're really productive, but we burn ourselves out. Versus you can be the other side of that wheel where you're just feeling everything is rubbish, and often with that lack of confidence, things aren't going as well as they could. And it's really good to avoid that by allowing yourself, I think, to recognise, right, I'm tired. My art is not going to be amazing. I'm not going to have the concentration to do things neatly or specifically or to think enough about it. So knowing that we're doing a loose sketch, we're being really one line sketch to get this in. We're trying out textures. I really think this is the most valuable lesson I've I've learned over my sketching times is to recognise that it doesn't always have to be your best work, it doesn't always have to be a lot of concentration. We can just let ourselves have fun and remember why we're doing the art in the first place, which was presumably to enjoy ourselves, to have a bit of fun, rather than, you know, some higher aim. We never thought at the start we were gonna be the world's best. Or if you did, good luck. <laughs> but you know, it's good to aim. It's good to aim high, but sometimes it's nice to let go of any aims you might have had, 
and just just go with it. So all I'm doing here is just gradually softening, moving some of these colors, making these washes a bit more just interesting, unscientific word, but just a bit more interesting. Um, I don't mean interesting in the British sense where as a Brit and you say interesting, that means I don't like it. What I mean is literally interesting. I mean, I want it to just, these loose colors, I want them to to say a lot without saying a lot. I want them to be simple, but fascinating to just look at, to explore. I think we are pretty much there. Again, we just don't want to overdo this. We're having a nice sort of gentle time with our colors. We don't want to overdo things. And we've got that lighthouse really standing out. I could probably just come in and do a tiny bit more work to make the lighthouse stand out from the surrounding areas. And I think in this stage as well, I'm, I'm quite happy to do a bit more, even more texture in here. Some, some little blobs of color, little lifts with the cobalt into some of these darker areas. And now I'm gonna let it dry again and we're going to come back with our pen and with our smallest brush, do some shadow work to make this scene suddenly, this very loose scrappy scene, really come to life. And there we are, we are nice and dry now. So I'm just going to focus my initial bit, the restructuring around the key object, which is this lighthouse. And again, we, we talked a lot about making it a real focus of negative space. So with some bold lines, we can really exaggerate that idea. And you see how this line I'm making very bold. This one I'm not going to make as bold because that's setting us up for our shadows. We can see the shadows being cast from light coming this way. So we can suddenly start, even with our pen, finding those key shadows, finding those areas, inventing some as well where it suits our image. We can invent some shadows as well. We can add some real tone into some of our window shapes. We can just find some extra little textures in the wall. There's a little bit of shadow down the bottom here. We'll just do a tiny bit of hatching along the edge. And this is something that we will probably further with some watercolor, but you don't have to. You could just do all of this shadow work, could come about from just little bits of hatching or vice versa. You could ignore all the hatching and you could just do it with some gentle watercolor work. And as ever, I will do both so you can see which one works best, which one ruins the image, and then make an informed choice about what you actually prefer, what you actually want to do. I'm gonna just continue this little dark line to really capture the edge of this greenery, to come round, to really highlight this area as definite negative space. Up here, we can see it's gonna sort of, it's still wet, so it's gonna flow away if I try and do that. So I'm not gonna do it there, and I'll just let this kind of line peter out like so. And I guess a nice way of just joining things together, just a little bit of hatching into the background there. And last little bits of line work then, we will just gently find this shape, find some more of these dark areas underneath where the sea is lapping at the rocks, redefine some of these watercolour shapes. Not too much, just enough. And maybe a little bit too much, but that's also okay, you know. We can only get it right in the future if we have made a few mistakes and we really know what to avoid. And there we go. I'm going to hide my signature, pop my initials on, and Last, but certainly not least, we'll do those gentle shadows and little highlights as well. So gentle shadow could be any slightly neutral color. Just the muck from our palette applied gently, like so, will produce a nice palette. A nice palette. We'll produce, you can tell I'm tired, can't you? I can't talk. We'll produce a nice soft shadow. We can then just find all these little soft shadowy areas we've hatched. And just layer them with a bit of this nice tonal color. Same over here. So we've got suggestions of shadow. We can add in a couple more little suggestions. We can add shadow into the windows where we've not added it with pen. We can just do a little bit of texture under a couple of places. We can keep the shadow going and just use it as well in a couple. We talked about the bottom of the sea here. You know, we've got these lovely little shapes. We can make them just a bit darker and just 
doing a little, I often use paint by numbers as a, a thing to avoid, but sometimes actually doing a little bit of paint by numbers for shadows and layering our shadows a couple of times like this can actually add a lot of simple depth to our painting, which is hard to achieve in other ways. So as much as I joke about paint by numbers, and actually I think if you enjoy paint by numbers, go for it. It's just, um, there are more interesting ways of using watercolors. Sometimes is a really simple way to look, just bring a lot of life and shape into an otherwise very simple sketch. Talked about a couple of highlights. So I just noticed there's a nice sort of sense of yellow up here, isn't there? So let's do that. And also notice in these couple of these doors, we've got like a nice blue door here. I just want to balance that somewhere else. So let's just make this door blue, for example. And last but not least, I'm going to use normally use red for the wind for the chimneys. But if I do that, I think it will be too mm, obvious, too standing out. So I'm actually going to use a bit of quinacridone sienna into these chimneys. And having done that, I've decided that that'll be a nice touch up here instead of the yellow. We'll cover that up with a bit more of a warm, punchy colour. Few splashes then of that colour to give the impression of the lighthouse sort of glowing. Just a very impressionistic feel. Little couple of other splashes elsewhere. And we're done. A really simple sketch to finish off my day. Hopefully a sketch that you can enjoy and get involved with as well. Just remember how incredibly loose the lines were, how incredibly loose that first layer of colour was. I chucked on some of this spray, not knowing what would happen. But from that all, just with a bit of restructuring, a bit of gentle application of shadow, we've come to the end and produce a really fun sketch. If you want to do more of this style of painting, then join me in my courses on sketchloose.co.uk. So thank you everyone for watching my little sketching videos. If you enjoy my content, please do subscribe to my channel because it makes me really, really happy. Thanks again.